United States submarine base at Key West, Florida. They dispatch that former President Truman's press secretary, Charles Cross, as saying that President Truman has no knowledge of any secret project by this government that would give substance to the existence of such objects. Cross also said that both the Air Force and the Navy deny that such objects exist. There needs to be like another tier of Patreon that's just <laughs> us getting all of our bullshit out of the way before we actually record. Because I would say we sat down to record, oh, maybe a solid hour ago. Let me look when you told me that you were in uh, um, 659. I, you were like, let's do this. And we, we did recorded for an hour. Patreon was yeah. almost an hour. And, but, and then we immediately came back. When did you send me the new link? Let me look. 7.55. Yeah. Oh, it's 8.14. That's not bad. But, you know, just we're like, all right, we just talked for an hour. We recorded for an hour, but we have other shit that we have to talk about. Yeah, that kind of this. Yeah, if you recorded, though, that's the difference. Yeah, it should be like another tier, like the Patreon of Patreon. Like if yeah. you get into Patreon and then you... S- Man, you got to do something intense. No, I'm saying it's fifty dollars a month. Fifty. No, you got to send us a finger, man. To get <laughs> on level to a Patreon like that. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the that's the, the deep dishes. Like, served pull out when, a tooth and mail it to me, yeah. and you can have access to these recordings. Yeah, um, these the ones that happen in between. Because like we'll start talking on Patreon, and it'll like remind me of all the other things that I just mm-hmm. have to tell you about, like life and the day. Yeah. And, and then when we set up to do the next episode, I'm like, by the way, how, can you fucking believe? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the, the stuff that you guys hear on regular episodes that we're not afraid to say, this is the stuff that I fear saying and having it be recorded. <laughs> yeah. No, and how I'm bad like, it is. I like look over my shoulder and I'm like, hold up, hold up. Let me close my door. <laughs> like, Let me I whisper. Gotta... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. It's there. like instead of sending it as a text, I do one of those voice recording things so that yeah. it's deleted after two minutes. Yeah, I make sure you don't save it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a gun to your Ooh. head. Um, yeah, that's literally that. Um, but also, hey, what's up? My name's Noelle. And whoo, buddy, buddy. The Crystal <laughs> Girls got me. You son of a bitch. I am Chelsea. I am the mm -hmm of Uh seeing Noel harass me saying I'm the one who got her into crystals when you're the one who brought crystals into this house in the first place. You're the one who started talking about crystals. And uh, now look at you buying crystals on purpose. Here's the thing. Let me tell you, first of all, Please, please explain yourself. <clears throat> you still haven't sent out the crystals to those people. Um, I'm sorry. Hold on. My audio just went <laughs> really bad. <laughs> um, I am so sorry. They are still in my car. God. They are written on my... Oliver took chalk and wrote on my wall. I know. I saw it. I wish it you would. real. I just um, don't go anywhere. So here's the thing. Let me tell you something. Let me Let me explain myself here. First of all... Um, a mutual friend was telling me Whoa. about how. Sorry, our Patreon episode just automatically opened. Keep going. Oh my God, you fucking bitch! I don't um, know how to d- internet. Uh, clearly, you just you don't work in tech. Um, <laughs> a mutual friend was telling me this has nothing to do with the episode. I'm so sorry, everyone. Just fast forward okay. if you actually want to hear the meat and potatoes of the episode. That's important that we're going to be doing, but. Beautiful friend was telling me about how her fucking life is essentially falling apart, right? Okay. Yeah. And then on a sidebar conversation with her, she tells me about how one of her best friends gave her this rock. And I was like, what type of rock? And she goes, oh, this is it. And she pulls it out. And I'm like, oh, that's Moldavite. She goes, yeah, Moldavite. And I go, who gave that to you? She goes, my best friend. And I go, hmm. Best friend's a bad person. Best friend. I was like, do you know about Moldavite? And I go, wait. When did you, when did she give this to you? And she said the date. And I was like, when did this situation that you're saying that you were just telling me about where your life started to kind of fall apart? When did that happen? And she was like, oh my God. And I was like, I'm not saying these things are correlated and the rock has power, but that rock is from outer space and a girl on TikTok lost her boyfriend, lost her dad, got in a horrific car accident, all because she got a $40 mold of idea. And now she's saying, who wants it? Bonk. No more parent. Don't, 
Guys, we're telling you, don't get Moldavite. We've been done telling you, you're better off sending Spencer Pratt $60 for glass. <laughs> Your life will stay the same. It's true. And you can spend less money Dude. on other things. It's so true. And I was like, with peace and love, I looked at her and I was like, do you and your friend have like beef that you need to resolve? Because they're not friends anymore. They're not. They can't be. Because I was even telling you in my darkest, most petty hour, I was considering buying Moldavite to hide in someone's fucking house that I didn't like because yeah. I wanted destruction for them in such a way. I wanted there to be death and loss. I was like, I'll do whatever. I was like, if my best friend, if like, well, maybe it's different because you guys know my obsession with Moldavite and there's a part of me that wants to, that welcomes the chaos. But like, if someone who said that they loved me gave me Moldavite, I would be like, we have problems. Yeah, a friend doesn't give Moldavite. Uh, Moldavite is like what you, you know, in Mean Girls, when they, Katie gives Regina like the fat bars to make yeah. the kids in Africa gain weight. Moldavite yeah. is the rock. Yeah. Making kids in Africa gain weight. No, it's so true. I couldn't. It, you give it to somebody who you want to make yeah. spiritually uh, unhealthy. Yeah. Make their life unwell. And I showed her, I was like, I bet if we go to TikTok right now and just type in Moldavite, well, the first like seven videos will be because like everyone was talking about how crazy it was. And then they, it was radio silence for six months. And then one person yeah. was like, hey, That's whatever it happened, <laughs> get, like, literally, yeah, to, like but- get, get right. And then six months later, one person is like, hey, what happened to everyone who got Moldavite? And then every single person was reacted to that video and was like, oh, I'm fucking a homeless heroin addict now. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly it. It took him six months <laughs> to do enough tricks on the corner of Skid Row to be able mm-hmm. to use quarter Wi-Fi to tell people yep. that Moldavite is dangerous. Yeah, no, um, it's true. She literally, by the end of it all, after showing her all the videos, she jaw on the ground. Like, she had to, like, think about her life. And I was like, yeah, you got to think about that friendship, yeah, dude. dude. Um, Let's who's the girl who gave her the Moldavite? Like, I think we should call her, record it, it's called talking to her and just explaining to her why she's a bad friend. Yeah. Well, there's no way you buy a fucking $150 minimum rock and give it to someone and not know what the fuck it does. Uh, what a, I'm going to say it. What a bitch. That is a bitch move, dad. That's a bitch move. But that is uh, so rude. Oh, that's rude. The audacity. Know, rude that's what I'm saying. I was literally like, oh, pff, I'm not. So here's my thing. So here's my thing. First of all, let me explain why I have bad crystals right now. Uh, this might come as a shock to you. I was, so I have a, I have a Baphomet candle head that I put candles in and it bleeds out Baphomet's eyes mm-hmm. and only specific candles fit in it. They're tiny. They have to be tiny and I like them colored either black or red. So I have to go to witch stores to get those tiny, they're ritual candles essentially. Uh-huh. That right. they, they're literally made for my little guy. Um, which makes sense. I used to think that was weird, but I'm like, well, if, I bet most people who are buying like a Baphomet head to melt candles in are trying to do some witchy shit. So I guess that makes yeah, sense. It's fine. <clears throat> so it's here I am. Fine. Yeah, it makes sense. Here I am fucking buying my candles and these crystal girls come up to me and uh, they're like legit. You know what I mean? They look like they do yoga. They're like made out of rocks. Yeah, they, yeah, their body's made out of yoga rocks. They just yeah. look like they're, they drink matcha tea constantly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I happened to be wearing at the time my uh, necklace, my little crystal necklace. Oh, they necklace. fucking just scuttled out of the woodwork. Yeah, they fucking came over to me and they were like, that's so pretty. Uh, where did you get that? And I go, oh, I got like the raw stone online. And then I had the jewelry people at City Creek make it into a choker for me. And then they were like, going off about um what cuz that's not what is it called it's uh carnelian carnelian yeah. right cuz that's what, carnelian is the opposite of moldavite which is why i got it for us and why you gave spencer pratt almost 70 dollars for glass um yeah. Also, they showed me cuz the girl had i should have taken a picture of it god she had a citrine bracelet like mm. how you like yours if it was real so it was like these tiny little citrine stones all different like shapes and like different colors of that orange like around and i was like oh i literally got a good laugh and i told them about your spencer pratt crystal story because it's my favorite story to tell terrible Uh, (laughs) yeah they were like so bad for yeah literally and um so they showed me a few stones to give you which i have 
Because also that's the oh, other that's thing. Sweet of them. When you go to the Crystal Girls, if you just want like little pocket ones, they're like a dollar or two. Oh. Um, so easy, easy decisions were made. Um, they gave me a couple for you, um, and then they told me about this, which I'm wearing right now. It's hematite, hematite. I don't know. How I I'm love hematite, it. dude. Hematite's yeah. like one of my favorite stones. It's like it's a, a grounding. It yeah. grounds you. Well, it also, it's uh, the negative energy protector. And they say when yeah. you wear it as a ring, if it cracks off of you, like it means it's absorbed too much negative energy. So I got one for uh, my partner and I because, you know, we have mad haters. And nobody <laughs> <laughs> hates your partner. Yes, they do. Except himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to explode immediately. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Fucking last night. Mine falls off my body, and I go, someone has energetically attacked me. (laughs) He's gone too far. (laughs) He's like, no, Chelsea, I'm so serious. This, this, and the next thing I'm about to tell you has changed my mind. So first, my mutual friend telling me about the shitty Moldavite and her life falling apart on a time. Literally, dude, to the day, to the day. There's, and then I think back to the guy, the no such thing as a coincidence, right? I'm like, that's, that's crazy. Then we're at this fucking concert where I see a bunch of people I don't like. And my fucking, the crystal girls told me the ring would fucking break off of my body. If the, the haters, and then it did. And I was like, I've been energetically. T- <laughs> so then I literally like, okay. <laughs> I fucking today, I was like, I have to go back again. And I felt, I'm not joking, Chelsea. I'm not joking. I felt like this morning when I woke up and remembered what happened to my ring, I felt weak. I was like, I'm, I'm at risk now. I'm in the open. I fucking got in my car and drove back to the store, saw the same bitch. And she was like, oh, you're back again. And I was like, the ring busted off my finger. I was attacked. I was accosted. <laughs> was accosted. And so I got another one. This last one, this one is, it's new. Um, but they're only like two dollars, so I'll do it all day. Uh, and I felt you, better. I need you. I felt better the moment I. Put- <laughs> I'm gonna as soon as this is done. I'm going. I need you to fucking just play this back and listen to yourself <laughs> because you changed, man. You are like <laughs> ranting. You're like foaming at the fucking mouth. Well, I just like I the fact that it's happened. You know when people say like. You know, the crystal girls would be like, put the amethyst near your head and your headache will go away. And then you, and you're like, you're crazy. You're an insane person. And, and you, I, all right, all right, wait, not to interrupt you, but you please. go and you're like, you buy a ring, uh-huh. a $2 ring, you yeah. buy a $2 ring yeah. and you go to a pop and concert, get mm-hmm. nearly blackout drunk. Yeah. It breaks. And mm-hmm. your surprise Pikachu face <laughs> is like, it's the energy <laughs> and not the lifestyle or the quality. <laughs> That's what you're going with right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's like a sturdy ring. Like it's a, like no, a metal. Dope, but it's, also yeah, it's like, you're it's fucking like, insane. I mean, um, maybe kind of. And then also, so the, the third part, which is related, but unrelated <clears throat> was the money tree. Do you know about money trees? Uh, like the plant or yeah. the, yeah. Yeah. So money trees, like just very popular in like Asian cultures. It It's kind of like the story of parasite, right? With that rock. If you yeah. take care of the money tree and it flourishes, you'll always be like, okay, financially. Yeah. It's not like the habit of like making sure that you put work into something and then that will flourish. It's the magic of the plant. Yeah. Okay. And then if the plant dies, bad things will happen to you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Here, here, let's talk about this, okay? okay. I know. Yeah, please. I need I, to talk about it. I need it. you to get on unreasonable side with me and I'm... see and see where you of all people should not be <laughs> looking at me right now with if these you... eyes. All right, let me tell you this. I'm actually going to sit up and say it with my chest. Please. You hypocritical <laughs> son of a bitch. I done been done telling you that we need to put salt in the cupboards yeah. we need to have iron by the doors yeah. because we're being psychologically attacked by the goddamn <laughs> faith folk every day and you're I know. like I know. texting if you had my father's phone number you would be texting him a location of a hospital to admit yeah. me to and now yeah. you're but yeah c- proceed okay chelsea i have another thing about the iron fuck dude this is what this <laughs> get to the episode (laughs) okay i know this is so important though everyone needs to understand how i've been changed because it's happening to me 
I fucking was at an abandoned farm, right? And I found a horseshoe and I liked it and I took it and I kept it, but I keep it in my car. You know how I've always had really bad luck with my cars, whether it's getting hit or hitting people. It's just not good for me. Yeah. Like you running down uh, homeless, innocent people in your car. He wasn't innocent, but he was homeless. Yes. It was fixed because you found a horseshoe and you kept it in your car. Ever since I kept it in my car, nothing has gone bad. I don't even need to knock on wood because the power of the horseshoe is in my car. Even when my car started making those god-awful noises, I took it to get fixed, and they fixed it for free. What the fuck is that, you know? What's that? They it's said the horseshoe. Oh, it's it's gotta, the, be. gotta be the horseshoe. So it's gotta be the horseshoe. It's clearly that, and I'm now have to get another one for my fucking door because the goddamn fairies. <laughs> so you so, should though. Yeah, I know. Everybody needs to keep iron by the door. We're not I joking will. about that. Um. So the fucking money tree, right? I get the money yeah. tree. Uh, almost two years ago, it's doing great. Yeah. Also, I'm getting random bonuses. I'm getting random money sent to me from like people online. I have the most money in savings I've ever had in my savings account, period. Like, you know, four digits. And it kept growing while the pandemic was happening and everyone was losing their jobs. I was getting promoted. It was like fucking insane. Okay. It's because of the money tree in the horseshoe. Listen to this though. I move the money tree's location. Bad. The Bad. money tree starts to die. Yeah. Almost immediately, all my money is gone. Yeah, I was going to say, you the other day made me drive and meet you because yeah. you didn't have enough gas money to make <laughs> it to my house. <laughs> yes. Yes. First of all, you live an hour away, so that's almost like a half a tank. But like literally, I went yeah. from having fucking thousands of dollars in the bank and always be all, all almost always having like a 800 to a thousand every check left over after bills yeah to i am pressing two pennies together and licking in between them for sustenance it's, i feel you um i had i have been essentially living paycheck to paycheck and i too have been getting lucrative raises mm-hmm. not lucrative uh but I think it's because of poor spending habits of like <laughs> buying from Spencer Pratt when I feel like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've never like, actually owned a money tree though. So we should do a control test. I should get one. <sighs> Not Dude, move I'm it. afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm tr- I've been desperately trying to bring it back. I put a crystal in the fucking thing. To try <laughs> oh, to Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, no, listen to yourself. <laughs> hold on. Hold put on. the plant back where it was. No, don't. Don't, oh my God. She's getting up to show me the plant. She's getting up to show me the crystal. It looks like a, you know how like people put those rocks in front of those houses, like the volcanic rocks. Noel found a rock in the road. And she's just proudly showing me her. She's gone insane. You guys, I think whoever is listening right now needs to call the police. The, like what you need to do is stop watering. Here's a hot tip and you can have it for free. Stop watering your plants with rocks and give it no. water. No, Please. I did both. But uh, anyway, so that's how I've been feeling. Um, and so when I went back to the Crystal Girls, because I feel more validated than I ever have because the ring broke off of me when I saw someone I didn't like. Who did you see, by the way? I can't say on this. Why? Do they listen? Maybe. Um, Thank a, you, actually, a, for your support. I appreciate a, it. I'm sorry that Noel's awful and crazy. Well, let's just say when they they have a follow back option for me. I do not follow them. They follow me. They were a gentleman suitor who was a piece of shit a few years ago. Saw their face, and I was like, ugh. And then maybe fucking- you'll be more endearing and likable now that you're on the slippery slope to insanity. Baby, I've been. I have been. But anyway, so when I went back to get my ring, I was talking to the girls and they were all hyped up. Everyone was juiced. You know what I mean? Everyone felt yeah. juiced and validated. They all like mixed matcha tea in with their like herbal <laughs> water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone was am. fucking burning incense about it. Uh, so then, but anyway, so I got to talking to them because I just think they're the greatest. Also, when someone hypes you up and validates your crazy thought, you're like, oh my God, I'm yeah, finally what's that hurt. like? You've yeah. never. <laughs> Uh, we've been doing this for years, uh, but go on. Uh, yeah. So anyway, this is uh, this is a bag specially curated for my partner. Okay. Um, and him doing well it's at just, work. It's like vitamins <laughs> and gummy bears, and yeah. This is this is the Flintstone vitamin pack of the Crystal Girls. Um, I do want to say something else. Uh, I have come at you 
Yeah. With a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You haven't quite hurt my feelings, but I feel like you've tried. Sure. Always. Especially when I went down the flat earth hole. That's different. Um, (laughs) That's different. And I was like, I know the earth is round, but what if it isn't? And Mm -hmm. you were, uh, you were the problem roasting. is that flat earth is always comes back to the Nazis and I can't have you that close to it. And you think magical rocks. They don't hurt anybody. I'm still getting vaccinated. I'm collecting vaccines. I've been back. Va- I'm ever. still getting vaccinated. You know, that's all what right. I, I, that's all I'm saying. When I tell you that I like to microwave my M&Ms, Okay, that's I just sick. need the support. <laughs> disturbing. And you know that that's not me being biased because multiple people have come forward and said that is the yeah, most the disturbing fuck? thing they've ever heard. Nobody came to wish me a happy birthday, but I got tagged. All <laughs> Yes, they did, you stupid bitch. Jesus. Learn how to tech learn how to yeah, check they Twitter. Came, they came at me into my DMs about the Cheez Its, and then I you know. You stupid bitch. Everyone was wishing you a happy birthday on Twitter because you're illiterate. You didn't see it. I'm not illiterate. I know how to read. I just don't know how to use <laughs> that. Um, I made this for you. It's the fucking Close Encounters movie poster. I put that UFO in there and made it suck up your body. You're welcome. Uh, graphic is design nice. is my prison. Um, if only <laughs> you... Oh, how's this for a segue? What? If only... All the little gay babies in Utah could have mm-hmm. the type of support you've gotten <laughs> from not only me, yeah, all the time, but the gemstone girls. <laughs> the way you got close to the camera right there, <laughs> terrifying. Um, terrifying. Also, our last, our Patreon episode recorded video too for some reason, which is new. I should post it. And oh God, no, <laughs> no, no one can see how thummy I look. <laughs> no. um, I do also want to say. Uh, with peace and love to him before we get into this terrible topic today that's very serious. Uh, yeah. Let me just put a bow on the craziness. Um, so after I, I would say, God, I hope he doesn't listen. My partner is like a golden retriever. Yeah. And um, when I was telling him about how the crystal girls were telling me about the negative energy rings, he was like getting hyped up and nervous. And I felt that he not only was fully, like, I was selling it really well and he was buying it wholeheartedly. Right. um, That when I told him that the Crystal Girls curated this special bag for him and his job, he he immediately was like, I feel like he wanted to leave work and come and get it. Like, that's how. And so Uh, it's just going to be really downhill for me, I feel. Because now I've got someone... agreeing with the insanity which is dangerous which i've always been the balance to you now it's full chaos energy always yeah you yelling you looking me in the eye through this zoom link and yelling at me about crystals yeah i feel like it's like pod people puffin came into the office because he sensed something was going on and was upset and whining so i had to pick him up look what you've done to my son look at his poor tender face Puff, he hates you looking and trying to get down. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyway, it's I, I was always just trying to prevent chaos energy. And here we are just fully diving into You've it. Gone dick deep. Like, oh, dude, I'm dicking balls scene, in. I'm dicking that balls scene in. in Jurassic Park where they're testing the poop, the triceratops yeah. poop. You are yeah. up to your elbow, but they at least wore a glove. I'm fucking bare fisted. Skin and shit. Yeah. yeah, I can't. Well, actually, I can't go in there barefisted with my ring again. I can't lose it again. No, um, the poop would be fine. The dinosaurs aren't judging you, man. <laughs> I, you the know. people who don't believe in the dinosaurs are judging you right now. I appreciate it. Uh, um, also, I was going to get you one of these rings when I went back in there today, but they didn't have any sizes that like this was the last size that could fit me. So I knew they mm, wouldn't have any for you. I have very skinny, skinny ring fingers. I'm oh. Like a size five. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll go back. I would actually really happen. appreciate it because I too buy into the magic of the crystals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dude, okay, you have they always, get you. You have always been. I'm telling you, if you got to talk to the crystal girls that I did, you would feel juiced. Are they um, open on Sundays? Yeah, limited hours though. Let's but, go. Uh, let's go. Uh, Not this Sunday because I have it's book club and Star Wars. But next Sunday, let's go. We're also going to paddleboarding, you idiot. Yeah, we are. We are. Super That's early. why we're going paddleboarding early. Yeah. Okay. You idiot. <laughs> you idiot. So anyway, yeah, right. 
Um, back back on track. So today's episode, God, how many? This is probably like fucking an hour in already. Fa- I, fast yeah. forward. We, there's no well, way to know. We will have to. I'll literally just go and time stamp exactly where this part happened and tell people to fast forward to this if let's, they want to hear it. Let's hit up the Crystal Girls and see if we can go in and record. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to order like transportable audio equipment, but I don't, we can get stuff that just plugs into iPhones and records it just like a a microphone, you know? Yeah. Okay. Hit Um, them up and then we'll, we'll go. They do readings. So, um, Oh, anyway, fucking gemstone reading. It's like whatever rock you swallow and the first one that passes through your digestive system tells them things. <sighs> okay, see? Now that's where you went too far. And this is where I say. Well, I don't think not, I went far enough. You want to know why? putting them in our mouths. They would be, they would be, first of all, I couldn't swallow it. I'd have to chew it. And then I would never <laughs> pass it because I have gastrointestinal issues. Yeah, and your teeth aren't that strong. Um, They're not. Okay. 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 So oh my God, damn okay, it. Okay. All right. God. Topic. I just got to get out of here. Uh, so for those of you who fast forwarded, to this part of the episode some things have like this is very how can i say this this is like local but also not this is current day and also very important and i am going to make some strong stands and i'm people are probably going to be upset and i just want to like get this out of the way um this guy um, on Twitter, his name is James W slash certified apostate on Twitter. That's like his little username. Mm-hmm. He said this. Um, Real quick though, for those of you who don't know, like apostate is something in religion where they are essentially against your specific belief or principle. Um, he like him calling himself an apostate means that he probably was LDS, but left the church yeah. and that's what they call people they've banished as apostates. Yes, because you're standing and you can do anything to get apostate status yeah uh, including existing so yeah so um we'll get into like what happened in a second but he said this and i want to kind of go off on this for a second before we dive into what happened he says Mm -hmm. i wrote and deleted many draft tweets about the byu address which is what we're going to be talking about today but i can't put the words together so i'll say this the mormon church has not been is not now and never will be a safe place for LGBTQ+. It is time to stop defending them, full stop. And I sat with this tweet for a while. Mm -hmm. And I chewed on it with the bites of, like, the Mormons building bridges, who always have, like, a big presence at Pride. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think about, like, the cool LDS people I know who have gay friends. Yeah, absolutely. But we call them, like, what? The Jack Mormons. Yeah. And they're trying to bridge the gap between the Jack Jack Mormons, who are the people who will, like, go to church sometimes and drink beer. Yeah. Um, But then, but then, I read the address that was given to BYU by um, what's his he's a oh my god what are they called they're the special group of people who think that they uh, talk to God the prophets Uh, yeah no he's an apostle he's an LDS apostle Jeffrey R. Holland so an apostle like straight up right yeah I I break it down in this paragraph but I listened to um I have the whole transcript and I'll post the link on discord and Facebook if you guys want it. Um, or you could just Google his full transcript of the address, but I read that. And then I came back to this tweet and that last part, the Mormon church has not been, is not now and never will be a safe place for LGBTQ plus it's time to stop defending them. Full stop. I spit out, what I was feeling about good Mormons Mm -hmm. because these are words from the top of the church, the top of the line, the people who enforce the rules. Yeah. And this is how they feel. It's like saying, uh, I'm not a white nationalist. I just like the way white hoods look when I wear them. Yeah. 
you cannot have one without the other because it is fundamentally a building block of their religion and they have solidified it um, in some things we're about to cover next. And I like respect a lot of people who are Mormon and practicing, um, but I do not care to me at this point uh, the LDS church is like the Westboro Baptist church to me. They are public enemies. They are public enemies to the people. And um, I will not fucking stand for it. And they try to hide uh, bigotry and racism um, with godliness. And as someone who doesn't believe in God, but respects and loves people who do, who are truly Christian, uh, that is the most anti godly thing, anti-Christian, anti-love-your-neighbor fucking shit I've ever seen in my goddamn life. And I think as someone who does not even believe in God, I look at the people who I love and care about, who love and care about people in the world and humanity and goodness who do believe in God, and I, I look at you in your fake fucking religion with your bullshit policies, and I go, you are the definition of hate. You are insulting to them, to those people who actually live godly, Christ-like, wholesome, full of love lives that you think you do. Mm -hmm. and that is the most incredible part about it. And that is why I feel like after this, after everything I've read, after everything I've learned, because I always knew it was bad, but I never knew how bad, yeah. Uh, I, I draw my firm line in the sand and I say, if you are a practicing Mormon, your heart is full of hate and I consider you um, a public enemy, just like I do the Westboro Baptist Church, just like I do evangelical tele-Christians who steal money from people dying of cancer. You are evil incarnate because you hide under the face of godliness and goodness and preach hate. And um, if hell is real, you will be there. You will not be in your levels of heaven high-fiving with your fucking supercharged armies of the dead that you think you're building. You'll be rotting with everyone else who preaches hate. So um, rotten piss. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah, so what, what did they do um, now? Like... So, they've been trying to bridge gaps. They've been trying to <clears throat> fix their image. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Mormon church has been a huge financial conglomerate of behind a lot of bills and things that don't necessarily keep the ch separation of church and state. And it caused an issue where the Mormon church was actually having problems retaining membership or getting younger membership. So they tried to do a whole media campaign, like you said, where they go to pride mm -hmm. Um where they were addressing like vaccinations even. And now that has changed. Yeah. So. Because uh, like, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or as we call them, the Mormons, which they don't like being called um, is now the fourth largest Christian denomination in the United States and counts over 16 million members worldwide. Um, adherence to Christian doctrine is expanded to encompass the teachings of the Book of Mormon and other teachings originating with Joseph Smith, who established the church in 1830 in New York. Um, the church has a pyramidal structure, which anytime you are, you know, pyramid scheme type business, you should raise red flags. Mm -hmm. um, but I, back to the um, it's Christian doctrine expanded. Um, this is like... Uh, <sighs> They took the Bible with Jesus, just like it's kind of like iterations, right? Just yeah. like uh, the Jewish faith believes in the prequels um, and then like modern day Christianity mm -hmm. believes in like kind of, uh, you know, the, the movies that came out 30 years ago and mm -hmm. the prequels and um, the LDS church is fan fiction based off of that, both. Yeah, it's essentially you have they do have the Bible. They don't necessarily practice from the Bible the way they do the Book of Mormon, but they believe that Jesus came to America. That's like a big thing. Mm -hmm. Established tribes here. 
They believe the, the angel Moroni. They believe that Joseph Smith. Um, we did a, a whole entire uh, LDS three part series uh, mm-hmm. years ago. We go over everything, but essentially the TLDR is like they believe in Jesus, but they believe that basically what they don't say it outright, but that Joseph Smith is like the new Jesus, like he's the new guy. Yeah, and they also believe that like Jesus and the devil are brothers which is a huge goes against like primary um, Christian beliefs because Christian beliefs um, huge Trinity type thing. And adding a fourth into that obviously disrupts the holy number. It's not like really a big selling point when people are like, Oh, Mormons aren't real Christians. Um, But there are things on paper that do make them different from your traditional run of the mill. Christian. Yeah. Yeah, It's literally, they took it's Christian fan fiction. Um, So Ultimately, authority lies with the first presidency and compromises is the 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 and is comprised of the president, is most commonly referred to as the prophet, his two counselors. The second highest governing body is the twelve apostles. Um, and then this is the other thing: everyone from this point up, the twelve apostles, the counselors, and the prophet, um, they all think they talk to God. Um, it's only allowed to. <laughs> Men, only men. Yeah, only men, only men. Um, <clears throat> and the 12 apostles are appointed by the president or the prophet, um, with each prophet succeeded by the most senior apostle at his death. Mm-hmm. Um, so that uh, is pretty much the summary of how it runs and, and uh, who the guy who we're talking about. He's not just some like bishop, he's a higher up. Um, mm-hmm. As stated on the LDS website, quote, the experience of same-sex attraction is a complex reality for many people. The attraction itself is not a sin, but acting on it is. The LDS church previously taught that same-sex attraction is a curable condition, promoted, and offered conversion therapy treatment. The, quote, November policy outright bans children of same-sex couples from baptism and from joining the LDS church unless they denounce their parents by the age of 18. This is the first time a Christian church has enshrined a baptismal ban on children of same-sex couples. Um, Another thing to note is that the November policy was essentially like enhanced and encouraged uh, in 2018. I think they redid the little pamphlets that they send out to missionaries that's like mm-hmm. some like uh speak our gospel and it goes over specifically about um you know well, and here's the issue like for those of you who have grown up in utah uh which i have the number one thing that you there's two things you're gonna get asked anytime you meet somebody new in utah it's either what ward are you in or are you baptized by ostracizing these kids um they are creating a subculture where they don't belong, whether they're attending church or not. And the reason why it's harmful is in Mormon church to even participate in just like regular religious ceremonies, like taking sacrament or bearing testimony. They're not Mm going to let you do that Mm -hmm. if you're not baptized and Mormons place a huge (laughs) emphasis on baptism because they infamously do baptism for the dead. Um, little kids get baptized when they're 12. And if you don't get baptized as a kid in the church, you either don't take it seriously and parents won't let their children hang out with you. Um, or you're ostracized completely. And when you live in a culture where it's like 90% of the people that you know go to church and then all of a sudden you're ostracized, um, then you run into issues where Utah has the highest suicide rate among yeah. kids. Yep. The highest suicide rate in the country and the highest teen suicide rate. Um, it is yeah. It is just like the numbers are there. Let's come on. Mm-hmm. Um, so how this all happened. Uh, so August 23rd. Yay, my year. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, BYU present, but yeah, BYU got this for you. Um, BYU, which is Brigham Young University, um, announced the quote office of belonging and quote, it will provide guiding principles for evaluating and implementing the recommendations provided by the committee on race, equality, and belonging. But it will also be the guide for addressing the needs of all marginalized individuals on campus. And, um, that sounds great. 
because I oh, we'll talk about it later. But the church, the, the LDS church, also has a tumultuous history with people of color, um, mm-hmm. and so this is essentially their school. And um, why do I have such beef with this? Um, <clears throat> BYU wants to parade around and cosplay like it's a university, get all the uh, the accolades of a university, but then it doesn't want to play by like the actual university games, and that's where I say, suck my dick. Um, so after this statement was made, basically, the biggest fear to to people like Jeffrey R. Holland, the apostle is this it's what they call liberal mormons the jack mormon yeah yeah this is their greatest fucking fear and so after byu announces this on like a <laughs> lot of nice puffin it's pussy oh anyway it's rudely interrupted by that rat dog um <laughs> they put posted this on their online blog essentially and then good old crusty white man jeffrey r holland did his uh the annual university conference where he like just speaks at byu essentially Mm -hmm. and he basically called out members students and faculty who are he says challenging the LDS teachings on same sex marriage. <clears throat> so this is all the Salt Lake Tribune did a good job paraphrasing his transcript. And that's mm-hmm. where um, all these quotes are pulled from. <clears throat> so Monday's annual university conference for faculty and staff in Provost School of BYU um, at the Marriott Center, Holland man who thinks he talks to God, quoted from a recent letter he received, which said that, quote, some faculty are not supportive of the church doctrines and policies and choose to criticize them publicly. Um, This is basically what happens here at the Marriott Center on Monday is uh, some good old fashioned Cold War techniques. It's uh, saying who's got the red scare, essentially. Like that letter was from an internal member of BYU telling him like just so you know there are people here who um say that the church stance on gay marriage and same-sex relationships is outdated so just how you should know bye love you Mm -hmm. he said BYU faculty and staff should take up their intellectual muskets to defend the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, especially the doctrine of the family and marriage as the union of a man and a woman. Um, I want to also say that there was like big talks online about his use of the term musket um, because he kept like, I even think the Human Rights Coalition made like a post about it. um, Mm -hmm. Because he was saying, like, to aim your muskets at them, like, at these people. And it's just an outdated coin of phrase about, um, like, use your knowledge of the Book of Mormon. Um, I do think that he did it in a double entendre type of way. Yeah, like, Um, we gotta go to war. Yeah. So, you know, suck my dick. Anyway. The Apostle said, But some choose to aim, quote, friendly fire. And from time to time, the church, its leaders, as some of our colleagues within the university community have taken such fire on this campus. And sometimes it isn't friendly. Wounding students and the parents of students who are confused about what so much recent flag waving and parade holding on the issue means. So that's him basically saying, um, we're so... Yeah, that's him literally saying we will ostracize you from the church and we will make you depressed and we will um, allow you to be put in such a state where you'll kill yourself because the other side is proud of. Yeah. And they wave a flag. Yeah. And that's yeah, it's just. 
the when he says the recent flag waving and parade holding on this what on this issue means the issue he's referring to is um, same sex relationships and he's talking about um, people saying like they support the Mormons building bridges they support and love and appreciate you know mm-hmm. we'll go into it <clears throat> Holland brought up the time a student um, he was a valedictorian too I blanking on his name right now um, at graduation on the podium um told like he also know that he's a valedictorian his speech was approved like weeks before by the dean Mm -hmm. like he came out like he talked about being gay and like this happened so many years ago and this fucking old crusty man who thinks he talks to god was so bugged about it that he brought it up like in his little commencement speech on monday he was like remember when that gay kid graduated and he said he was gay can you believe that? I was just like an affront oh. to religion. Yeah, like just shut the fuck up. Um, here, Chelsea, do you want to read his next quote? I want yeah. you. This is what this is exactly what he says after talking about um, the gay valedictorian. What might commencement come to mean or not mean if we push individual license over institutional dignity for very long? He asked. Do we simply end up with more divisiveness in our culture than we already have? And we already have too much everywhere. This is the guy who stands on the fact that they thought the market cane was black people. Yeah, that's Don't literally really want to get into religious history. That is literally it, which is also why this is so fucking rich. Joseph Smith literally said, and I go into it later. If you pray hard enough, you'll become white and that whiteness is holiness and that the mark of Cain literally meant black people. I and the fact, the fucking fact, it was 1978 when people of color were allowed to, like, come into the fucking church. Ooh, what's that? Um, it's this big ass bottle of wine. Nice. Yeah. Crack that Let's, bitch open because we're about I'll to drink get it on depressed. Sunday. OK, uh, Even better. It looks like you. Oh, that was sweet. That was sweet. Sorry, I've been house-sitting a dog for a week, and his mom just came and got him, but we're recording, so I couldn't do anything. But she paid me the wine, which we nice. all know is the only currency I accept. I, I mean, anyway. really, pop that bitch um, open, because it's, okay. it's, it's about to get worse in here. I just fucking... This is the thing, right? <clears throat> These are his fucking words. These are exact quotes. This is a speech he wrote out, and he thinks he talks to God. And he literally said... As a religious person, I would like to dissect it. Please. When you push individual license over institutional dignity, the whole, which is essentially like, can you make your own choices within the church and still have that church consider itself Christian is what he's saying. We as a church cannot be taken seriously if we allow people within our congregations to accept gay people. Um, That is clearly what he is saying, but the entire foundation of the war in heaven that Mormons very much subscribe to because they talk about, you know, Lucifer falling in the great war in heaven is the idea that individual liberty versus like forced worship Mm -hmm. was the whole premise of that. And here we have somebody kind of towing a very, very thin line of trying to get people to do exactly what he wants them to do and not letting them find that path. A A thousand percent. <clears throat> it's like I we are interjecting with our opinions, but his direct quotes itself just are the evidence you need. It's like if we were to go to court about this, bro, you've buried yourself. <clears throat> yeah. The church owned school, BYU, quote, quote, must have the will to stand alone if necessary, being a university second to none in its role primarily as an undergraduate teaching in this institution that is unequivocally true to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the process. Um, this is what I say about BYU wants to cosplay as a fucking university, but then are like, Mm, we see how all these other universities are handling, uh, they're starting to come out about rape cases and they're starting to make, um, you know, uh, organized groups for people of color and people in the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not going to do that. Like, because staying true to the gospel of Jesus Christ is first. And first of all, you're not even staying true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're going off on your own fan fiction ways. Come on, let's get it. You know, don't lose the line of the plot. 
<clears throat> no one wants it to, quote, come to that. Also, this is a note that he's worked. He worked as BYU's president from 1980 to 1989. Mm-hmm. But if it does, we will pursue our own destiny. Which I don't even know what that means. Because, like, BYU is a private school anyway. They're going to go more private. I don't. I just think it means that, like, if I, what I think he's saying here is if these, like, new norms of inclusion and equality get pushed on us too hard, we just won't. We'll just do our own thing and go our own way. Like, we'll just stop accepting students or whatever. Yeah, we just won't play by the games anymore. It's just the most insane thing. Yeah. To be clear, quote, let me go no further before I fucking hate this paragraph. Oh my God. I feel like I'm, this, the second part of it's the worst. <clears throat> Let me go no further before declaring unequivocally my love and that of my brethren for those who live with same sex challenge and so many and so much complexity that goes with it. Too often the world has been unkind in many instances crushingly cruel to these our brothers and sisters like many of you we have spent hours with them and wept and prayed and wept again in an effort to offer love and hope while keeping the gospel strong and the obedience to commandments evident in everyday individual life be careful that love and empathy do not get interpreted as condoning an advocacy or that orthodoxy and loyalty to principle not be interpreted as unkindness or disloyalty to people. Let's unpack that. First of all, thanks for the gaslighting King. Um, declaring your unequivocal love while in the same breath saying they have same sex challenge. The church has come out and said that they believe that, um, you know, being gay is something you're born with. And yet in the same breath, they say same sex challenge, like it's a disability, like it's a, like it's an illness. (laughs) Here's Uh, my, here's my issue with that specifically. A lot of times uh, you will hear, don't hate the sinner, hate the sin. And that's essentially what he's saying. And that's like a very polite way for people to essentially be like, I don't agree with your lifestyle, but I love you. And here's why that's bullshit. Um, and here's why when somebody says that to you, do not accept that as acceptance. Um, to label somebody as a sinner just in general is implying them as an other. You know what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. a term of endearment in the mm-hmm. Mormon church and in a lot of other churches. Um Churches that say like, oh, sinners welcome, try to be a little bit more upfront and a little bit more accepting, but just anyone who says hate the sinner, hate the sin, um, is just a really backwards compliment for themselves to make themselves feel better. Um, yeah, yeah, we're all sinners quote unquote. Um, but point, uh, I don't want to get too preachy because, uh, we all know that my religious upbringing was very different and I did not experience this in my church. When my pastor left and they went to not liking um, gay people or were less progressive, I had to leave and it sucked. Um, but it's like I, you can't be in an institution that just fundamentally goes against like what human compassion and just common sense. So yeah. religion is not in the business of looking at like quote unquote sins and then deciding what God's decision is about them because we don't really have a list for it. And I know that's funny because we, Oh, we have the 10 commandments, but like religion isn't the sin management business. It fucking isn't. And for people who think that it is, um, I just feel like they have a very strange understanding of their religion. Um, the number one rule of like, I dare say any religion is like what focus on a lifestyle that your deity would be happy with, but it is not sin management. And this is sin management and it's fucking weird. It's weird that it's a sexual sin management. And the fact that there are other sexually prevalent sins that could happen in church and often do happen in church. Like, uh, I don't know, 
the fact that they don't have a method set up for kids who report sexual assault from bishops or from other church leaders, but they're so focused on this. Or the fact that one of the main requirements of the LDS church is like, they will sit young women down with their male fucking, uh, what are they called? The individual people who run the wards bishop with their bishop and they pry and essentially the bishop begs for them to give extreme and explicit detail about any sort of like sexual interaction or sexual thoughts that they fucking had. And you're Mm going to look me in the eyes and tell me you're worried about the gay couples and their fucking kids. Yeah. You meanwhile, the boy scouts of Utah, which is primarily almost exclusively run by the church has had allegations of sexual misconduct running back to the fucking Mm seventies and you want to sit here and tell me same sex challenged individuals eat my ass. I just, it's so fucking insane. They're literally like, Oh, it's fine that we have pedophilia going on, but the gays who are in, you know, committed monogamous relationships, adopting children, saving the fucking world, planting gardens. (laughs) Like fuck that. I can't. I can't. Beware of how people talk about sins that like what don't affect them. Um, I know it's always like, oh, the people who are secretly or closet gay are the ones who are like talking about it most. But yeah, like, like, let's just I don't know, like this guy is an angry, hateful person. Instead of saying anger, he's going to say, no, I'm standing up for my religion. Instead of saying hate, he's going to say, no, I'm trying to warn people away from hell. Hate and anger are still sins. And even like the church sitting on what billion, like a billion dollars, it was recently discovered. Mm-hmm. Greed is a sin, which was rephrased as planning for the future. Anytime a sin gets pointed out in a religion and they can do put it in a spin zone instead of fucking owning up for it is like yeah. a dangerous religion. A and thousand the fact, percent. And the fact that you come to them and you're like, this is hateful. This is hurtful. This is damaging. And it gets twisted into something that turns into righteousness is a problem. Um, and the fact that somebody can look at a gay person and say, well, that's sin. It's like, what the, f- like, what the fuck is going on here? It's just like a, what a giant yeah. shit storm here. Um, the, just what you condemn in others is it, it's, it's just fucking dangerous. And that's, what's going on here. Well, with like, religions. well like here, let me, I'm going to, I'll play devil's avocado as someone who does not believe in God and doesn't distri- uh, uh, subscribe to religion. Didn't fucking Jesus die for your sins? What are you tripping about? That's you're fine. This, that's what the why, entire Second Testament is about. <laughs> why are you waking up in a cold sweat? Because you're like, the yes. gays are getting married. What the fuck does that have to do with you? What the f- If you really think that the gays go to hell, then let the linebacker angels you believe in fucking knock them down at the pearly gates then. You fuck off here. You can go yeah. fuck all the way off here. If you really truly think that, then this is all those people have, is this life right now on this fucking mortal plane. So let them get married, let them buy houses, let them adopt kids. Because if you truly believed in your fucking gospel, you would think that they would incinerate the moment they tried to touch the fucking gates. So shut the fuck up. You are saying, essentially, that you don't even buy your own bullshit. That's what you're fucking saying. You're saying, I don't even believe my own bullshit that the gays won't be allowed in fucking heaven. Cause if you did, you could just live your life and fuck all because it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Well, and even that, like homosexuality is mentioned in the Bible three times. If you really want to go into Sodom and Gomorrah, you're interpreting it wrong. I'll call you the fuck out. But six times, if you include that, if you look at like greed, pride, uh, gluttony, sloth, anger, um, hundreds each time and they are picking the one thing that they think doesn't apply to them and just like they're punching down and people who think heaven is a country club like where you have to buy your way in um with not necessarily money but with like clout like religious clout you're cosplaying your way into being a decent person and that's not how it fucking works yeah like no a thousand percent um the fact that he has to specify don't let empathy get interpreted as condoning an advocacy and people are going to tell you that you're unkind if you stay loyal to the doctrine that is just that i i can't like 
digest that because he knows he knows he's addressing these people because he knows what he's doing is fucked and wrong and he's saying it there and he's drawing a line in the sand for people who maybe like didn't have an opinion or like mormons who are like starting to finally open up he's like drawing a line in the sand where it's like i want to go to heaven Mm -hmm. so i can't associate yeah. with gay people anymore yeah it is just fucking insane yeah this um, guy is a bad person a thousand percent um here i'll let you i'll let you wrap this up this guy daniel ellsworth um he went to byu and he's pro this statement go ahead chelsea let us hear the bad news um So Daniel Ellsworth, a business consultant in Charlottesville, Virginia, a BYU alumni, and one of the organizers of the radical orthodoxy movement in the church, sees the church school as ground zero for what they worry about with Mormon liberals. Um, And what Elder Holland envisioned for BYU in his address is something that has never been done, helping LGBT and other minorities feel real belonging while also clearly upholding both the church's doctrines on gender and sexuality and the church's teachings on identity. This might feel like a superhuman undertaking, but I share Elder Holland's hope and I encourage the BYU community and alumni like myself to give the most charitable and generous possible interpretation to his remarks and be willing to get outside our comfort zones to realize his vision. Uh, yeah. So how do you feel about that? I mean, I'm not surprised that the guy who's in charge of the radical orthodoxy movement inside of the church agrees with what this guy says. I think that speaks for itself, but he's also tying it back to, um, this is not just about the LGBTQ community. This is also about minorities, um, Mm -hmm. feeling safe in BYU and, uh, and going outside the comfort zones, he means going outside the comfort zone of human compassion and that, yeah. tribal instinct, like our caveman brains, how we have to function as a person is creating like an us versus them mentality. And he's, they're forcing it on kids who are either coming back from admissions, girls who go into BYU to get their undergrad. Most girls, it's like a joke. Girls go into BYU to get their associate's degree and then they get married. Yeah. Um, it's it's a vulnerable time for a vulnerable community because I, I also think that like young Mormons are also vulnerable um, where they literally believe that they're on the precipice of either getting into heaven or fucking not. And they're entering, yeah. they're leaving their home, they're opening themselves up to all sorts of new experiences in college. And they have someone coming in and saying like, if you open up too much, you will go to hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, a thousand percent. And I think, like, um, also I wanted to mention this about, uh, like, people of color, just a timeline on the LDS Church. Um, This is a direct quote from the Book of Mormon. They say, shall be a white and a delightsome people. Um, Mm -hmm. Just referencing the fact that they literally said you could pray yourself white. Um, In 1978, the LDS Church had a restriction up until 1978, the LDS church had a restriction um, on black members participation and prohibited black men from becoming priests and opposed interracial marriage. Um, So let's just, you know, remember that that was our parents. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, my, I have a lot of issue with this because um, for obvious reasons, but I think there are a lot of people who find a sense of community and belonging in the church and, Mm -hmm. or people who have left the church, but maybe haven't like, cause to leave the Mormon church, you have to like basically write a letter and get yourself removed. Yeah. Um, But a lot of people just don't do that because they don't want to make their parents upset. Right. And, um, I just, at this point, um, I don't care. I don't fucking care. I don't your sense of community in your fucking hateful church means nothing to me. Mm-hmm. You you are you know what you are? You know what you are? The type of person who agrees 
that the LDS teachings and beliefs on like minorities in the LGBTQ community, they, they say out loud that they don't think that's right, but Mm -hmm. they're still, but they're still in the church. Yeah. To me, those people are the worst. To me, those people are the actual worst because at least elder Holland, you know, is buying what he's selling. Mm -hmm. He's doubling down on it, even though it's evil fucking garbage he uh, fully, fully believes it and says it with his entire chest uh, and advocates for it. Whereas people who go, yeah, I don't like, you know, I don't think it's good what they say, but they still are Mormon. You're the worst. You're the worst. I also hate the fucking when people say like, well, it's not going to change if I leave it. Yeah, it fucking will. It might it might not change like the institution, but you'd be surprised like how it will change your life and how it could also like impact somebody's somebody else's life. Like, you know what I mean? What if like a few years down the road you have somebody in your life like a kid or you marry into a family and then they have somebody who's gay or LGBT, you know, just any kind of on that spectrum and then they know that you're an advocate because <clears throat> You know, you put your money where your mouth is. And I get it. Like leaving a church is hard. Um, Not being a part of organized religion might be hard, but like. But you're going to tell me like the community at your weekly Sunday meetings mean more to you than actually being a good person and living a life that your God would truly be proud of. Yeah. And Um, it's it. It like breaks my heart the amount of people in my life who fall onto the LGBTQ plus. And uh dude, like you gotta just like you gotta be in people's corners. Like you can't hum haw on this stuff. And that's like I do feel really bad for people who are maybe feeling conflicted that like your family won't love you anymore. Um, if you choose to not be in the LDS church, but you know what? They wouldn't have fucking loved you if you were gay. So is that real love? I, I just dare like, say not. <laughs> that's the whole thing though. That's it's the answer is in the situation, it's in the yeah. sentence. If your family the if the woman who birthed you or the woman who raised you or the person who raised you whatever mm-hmm. if whoever these people are who are supposed to be you know your tethers to the world mm-hmm. if they can cuz like if you're an apostate you they can't talk to you none of that shit if they cut you off for that then like what is the value of their love? Like, what are you that's really purely missing? transactional? Yeah. That's really just, it's a fair weather relationship. Yeah. And I hate this. <clears throat> I actually had a conversation with my mom about this in regards to her own mother. Um, just because people are family doesn't mean you like owe them anything. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're bad people, if they are racist, if they are bigoted fundamentally, yeah. Uh, I don't care who they are. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, you fucking go because you can decide if you want to be like a good person or um, a fucking cuck. Yeah. I just like, I just can't handle how people can say that they're religious and that they're, you know, good Christian people um, with the values of God and then just absolutely hate and want to destroy people just for existing, you, you just can't. for being who they are. It's um, the cognitive, it's cognitive dissonance. And this guy's giving people permission to do it. So that's a thousand percent it. fuck him. That's a thousand percent it. And yep. I just, I can't, I can't fucking do it anymore because I thought about it for a while. And I keep going back to what that guy said. Um, it never was never has been and never will be a safe place for LGBTQ plus people. And um, we need to stop supporting them. They keep getting the pass because, you know, they, they show up at pride and they say building bridges, Mm -hmm. even though every single page of the doctrine they believe in is written to encourage hate and pain for people they don't even fucking know. 
And it's, I feel bad for the people who are stuck in it, who have to like play the game, like teenagers who have nowhere to go and they have to like fucking just wake up knowing that they got to pretend to be something they're not because they know that their family or their culture, their surroundings or, you know, just their people won't accept them. And that just, it sucks, man. It's so fucking sad. And it's sad because it's, it's being uh, promoted. Uh, It's being praised by these types of people who they've been taught their whole life to look up to. Like if somebody... If I fundamentally believe somebody spoke to God and that person told me that I was bad and that people shouldn't love me anymore, I would be fucking wrecked. Yeah. And like, it, it sucks that there's not more people speaking out against it within the church, but I think it's because the stakes are so fucking high and it, it, well, I just, yeah, my whole thing comes back to what I was saying before. If you truly believe that there is a God and there is heaven, then um, don't worry about other people. Worry about yourself. Mind your own fucking business. Don't, what you are doing is more so risking your one-way ticket entry fee to heaven by Mm -hmm. getting in the way of other people's lives and telling them how to live and how not to live it. Mm -hmm. Um, If you really believe in your shit, um, then just fucking do your own thing. Don't, fund campaigns and go on podiums and make statements about how we, you know, can't support this specific person or these specific people. Um, Mm. That's literally the definition of hate. Uh, Just fucking sleep soundly knowing that, you know, all of us gays will try to get into heaven and be kicked out and punted down the road. um, If you really do believe that, Um, you know, just, I, that's all, all they're saying to me when they do shit like this is that they're, they're, they're 50, 50, they're half in half out, Mm -hmm. but they could, they don't really believe that the gays won't go to heaven because if they did, why would they be doing this shit? Yeah. Um, they got no skin in the game, man. I know it just commit, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, man. I'm sick of it. (laughs) I'm sick of I'm so sick of religion um, hiding, um, hiding hate with, uh, you know, holiness. God, I just rewatched that Jesus camp documentary. The one that like takes little kids and makes them little Christ warriors. And yeah. uh, I've <laughs> said it before and I will say it again. Evangelical new like mega churches are fucking evil trash. Um Dude, I'll talk to people about religion anytime, but like, I just can't with like organized religion anymore. Yeah, I, to, I can't. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, baby. And that's what they're going yep, for. Yep. If your fucking bishop or pastor has a private jet, they don't give a fuck about God. Uh, they're just yeah. playing the game because honestly, with peace and love, all those motherfuckers sitting in a circle of 12, all looking at each other, thinking they're all talking to God, playing this insane game of fucking telephone. All of them are in on it. You know what in on it is? They don't hear nothing when they pick up that phone. They're all just fucking playing the goddamn. Oh, it's a show. Self-validating. Oh my god, is it a fucking Broadway? They're hearing what they want to, dude. It's self-fulfilling prophecy. We talked yeah. about it off air. They are manifesting what they want to happen, yeah. and they're yeah. convincing themselves that it's right. You fucking believe it? I'm telling you, the people high up, the people highest up who do shit like this and cash fucking, you know, six-figure checks every month on untaxed donations. Mm-hmm. Why does God need money? Uh, why does he need a PR campaign? Shut the fuck up. You're cashing that shit out. It's been proven. Those motherfuckers, those motherfuckers know. They're in on it, dude. They're the mm-hmm. magicians. They know the fucking tricks. They, they're in on the lie. That's what kills me. It's because I fucking know. There's yeah. no way you put 12 crusty old men in a little circle jerk and they all think they pick up the phone and talk to God. All of them are fucking in on it, dude. I just can't. It's so obvious to me. And I just am like, we are, this is why humanity needs to become extinct because we're all so dumb and gullible. Mm-hmm. Um, you're the worst of us. Yeah. Anyway. Be- that's beware that. of men. Whose dicks are the only swords they swing. That's a thousand percent it. Um, now more than ever, and most importantly, I want to say, you know, there's one guy. There's one guy out there who won't, who doesn't judge you or care that you're gay. Um, that, and you know what? He, the, the true uh, advocate for autonomy 
uh, who wants you to only live deliciously. Um, hail Satan. Hail the Trevor Project uh, that does its best to get poor kids the fuck out of these situations. Yeah, donate absolutely. Money if you can. Everyone, please donate money to the Trevor Project. I definitely will with this next paycheck just to help me fucking cope. And I'm going to do um, it in this guy's name. So Please. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, Elder Holland. Um, definitely do it for him. Also, make sure you follow us on the everything. Um, go to Hell Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Noelle Fain. That's Sith Lard. <laughs> it caught on, you know? Um, Sith Lard. Um, you can try to follow her on Twitter, but she won't check it or know how to reply to you. Tag um, Noelle in it so that I she'll tell me to check it. I don't I, know, really know how. Sometimes I take screenshots and I send it to her like she's an 85-year-old woman. Um, yep. Follow us, support us on Patreon. Um, patreon.com slash go to hell podcast, uh, new episodes on there every week, um, unfiltered, unhinged and inappropriate. A dollar gets you in the door. Make sure you are supporting Kelly Holloran, our dear artist deity. Um, her Etsy is wild wood owl. Also follow her on Instagram. She's got pins and stickers and making cool fucking designs um we said it before everyone on patreon check your mailboxes you got gifts coming to you um we'll see you guys at fanex september 16th 17th and 18th still haven't solidified down those schedules we'd love to see that i've gotten some panel assignments uh not the horror panel though but did you i did how how'd you, you find got, out well you got on one oh, it's, posted. Um, it's posted we'll use I can- it's not posted. Uh, I went into the uh, app, oh my searched God. our names. How? Okay. So, so far you got folklore in the roots of modern horror. How is that how we're finding out? That's, I don't know. Oh uh, do you, and I'm trying to find Jeffrey R. Holland's email address. <laughs> <I can laughs> put him in on this fucking donation. Oh my God. I can't. Okay. Anyway, that's fine. Um, yeah, anyway, that's basically that. Also, uh, the Teespring link is in our Instagram bio where you can buy merch. I've got a jacket, an oversized hoodie. It's like a 2XL coming on Saturday. I'm very excited. Yeah, good. Go get that stuff. Uh, how about anything that we make for the rest of the year? We'll donate to the Trevor Project. Please. Actually, Please. we haven't done a single cash out, so any money we've made so far will go to the Trevor All of Project. It. Yeah, yeah. So I would say... Uh, the, the seasons are changing. We're about to get into um, hoodie slash pullover weather. Uh, grab a hoodie or pullover and know that all the proceeds will be donated. We'll just do it for until the end of the year. Yeah, and we'll donate it in your <laughs> whoever's honor. I'm doing yeah. mine in Jeffrey R. Holland. I can't find his email address, but he does have a Twitter. I know he does. Um, if you want to uh, donate it, uh, who, who are we hating? We have, well, we have... Jeffrey Holland, the pick any of the apostles, pick any of the 12 apostles um, and uh, let us know. We'll, we'll put it in their name. Absolutely. So, okay. okay. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Get the fuck out. <laughs>